first of all in Antioch in Acts of the Apostles where they were first called Christians by ungodly people unbelievers called them Christians that was the identity they gave to them the Holy Ghost never referred to believers as Christians the Holy Ghost refers to believers as believers all right and that's why it's important that you are thoroughly and properly pastored and taught you know I was just thinking about it today most people that you hear just talk anyhow they are product of either no pastoring or bad pastoring no pastoring or bad pastoring when somebody is not well pastored you will hear him say things like everybody is everybody is saved everybody in the world is saved those statements are coming from people who are not well pastored who are products of bad pastoring or have never been pastored because everybody is not saved if everybody is saved there's no need for the preaching of the gospel and then you hear some people say things like god is not going to punish anybody everybody is just going to go to heaven whether you believe the gospel or not again people who speak like that are products of bad pastoring or no pastoring so from the way a man talks you can tell if he has been properly pastored or has not even been pastored at all because the essence of ministry is ministry in the book of ephesians it says when he ascended on high he gave gifts to men apostles prophets pastoring teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the perfecting of the saints if there was no need for the office of the pastor there would be no need for jesus to give the pastor to the church so again it's important to pay attention so that you do justice to the kind of pastoring you are receiving so you don't become a minus to the labor that we are laboring to make sure you are giving adequate instruction in the word of his grace philemon chapter 1 verse 6 says that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you because you are in christ the communication or the fellowship or the koinonia or the participation of your faith becomes effective when you come to a place of acknowledging, a place of comprehensive insight, a place of accurate understanding or a place of precise knowledge. When you come to that place of precise knowledge, you begin to enjoy every good thing in you because you are in Christ. Somebody said to me, good things are in me because i am in christ can i hear you say one more time good things are in me because i am in christ can i hear powerful amen so we began to say that the word disciple is the greek word mathetes mathetes m-a-t-h-e-t-e-s like math tetis mathetes that's the word disciple it's a contrast of dadaskolos 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 is a teacher all right so for you to have a disciple you must have a teacher and for you to have a teacher you must have a disciple jesus never asked us to go around the world making disciples in the book of matthew 28 verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world so now the word disciple does not surface in that scripture the word disciples he tells us to teach all nations so take note of the word teaching and observe all i have taught you teaching observe all i have taught you so he simply said teach he didn't say make them disciples he said teach them all right teaching to observe everything i have taught you please pay attention i'm going somewhere so when he began to say teaching them to observe he didn't say what they will become when you teach them he didn't say teaching them so they can become disciples no he said teaching them to observe everything i have taught you that's all he didn't tell us the outcome of that teaching he just stopped there and there's a reason why i made that emphasis mark 16 15 to 17 and he said unto them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. He didn't use the word disciple. He just said, go and teach, baptizing them. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Luke 24, verse number 47. 
and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things all right so matthew never talked about disciples mark never talked about disciples luke never talked about disciples meaning that when people receive the gospel an ability is transferred on them and that ability is not transferred on them by teaching it is transferred on them by believing the ability to make them sons of God, the ability to empower them as sons of God is not transferred to them through teaching. That ability is given to them through believing. John chapter 20, 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. When he spoke, they believed, they received the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So, if you believe the message, your sins will be remitted. Automatically, when you believe the gospel, you receive something. Automatically. When you believe the gospel, you receive something. Now, but the word disciple means one who gradually becomes. One who gradually becomes. But Jesus said, when they believe the gospel, they become. No gradual, no process okay but a disciple is one who gradually through a process becomes but a believer believes and receives at the same time he believes a believer believes and receives at the same time he believed but a disciple is one who gradually becomes something so the word disciple is not used all right now but the writings of john gospel was very unique because he wrote from an apostolic era like i always say to you john wrote the book of john the same week he wrote the book of first second and third john so john wrote from an apostolic understanding by the time he wrote the gospel of john he had already started understanding and receiving revelation knowledge and that is why if you read the book of john there are a lot of post-resurrection you know uh, things in the book of john he wrote things that pointed to after the resurrection of Christ, which not Matthew, Mark, or Luke wrote because John had insight before he wrote the gospel of John. That's why John chapter 1 verse 12, but as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As soon as they believe, they receive. The word power is the word right, exousia. He gives them the right to become sons of God. John 3 16 let's pay attention to the words of Jesus for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have the moment you believe you have there's no process that whosoever believeth shall not perish but have everlasting life no process you believe you have you believe you become the moment you receive the gospel you believe the gospel you become something is given to you at the moment you believe but as a disciple you are an adherence of something all right that means there's a gradual process in becoming a disciple but a believer believes and becomes a son of god at the instance he believed he doesn't have to be taught he doesn't have to go through teaching he doesn't have to go through process he doesn't have to go through steps the moment he believes the gospel he becomes that's why jesus never said make disciples he said preach the gospel when they believe they become and this sign shall follow please that's important because the word disciple has been used in the church world largely to cause some little confusion and keep people in darkness concerning what it really means again that's why we must always pay attention to words because words are very key in the understanding of the message or the gospel of christ so again you are not a disciple of jesus christ you can be a disciple of your pastor you can be a disciple of even a heretic you can be a disciple of anybody but you are not a disciple of jesus so the moment you believe the gospel instantly you become there are no steps to obey that word disciple actually being implied as when you get born again there's a process came from religion it didn't come from the bible it came from religious practice the word believe is used in the four gospels 73 times the word believe believe 
is used in the four gospels 73 times in matthew mark and luke it's used 23 times john only uses it 50 times the word believest believed or believing is used in all the gospels 16 times but john alone used it 47 times so that means we have to rely a lot on what brother john wrote why because john wrote eyewitness account from revelation knowledge perception eyewitness account but from revelation knowledge perception so he used the post-resurrection predictions of jesus matthew focused on the last days mark focused on the miracles of jesus in the book of john you won't see many miracles just a few miracles but you will see a lot of Jesus' teaching concerning the redemptive sacrifice in the book of John. The thief come and up of the steel kill and destroy, but I am come that you may have life. Except the corner of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But when it dies, it bringeth forth fruit. If I be lifted up, I will draw souls to myself. All that the Father has given me none is lost. Everything John spoke about was about the redemptive sacrifice. His emphasis was on the redemptive sacrifice. I am come that you may have life. As many as received in them gave you power to become the sons of God. We have found him of whom Moses wrote and, and, and the prophets, Jesus. So all the writings and the emphasis of John was on the redemptive sacrifice. And that's why you will see believe, believing or believed in the book of John more than anybody else. Because the emphasis of John was on the post-resurrection realities of the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus. John chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, 17, 18, and 19. John spoke more about the last days of Jesus on the earth. So we must pay attention to John. Because John, hardly you will find in the book of John the use of the word disciple. John focused on the fact of Christianity. We are not learners. We are receivers. We receive. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe you, receive. A man can receive nothing except it be given from above. The natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Receive. Re we are not learners. We are receivers. We receive. Oh, they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they reign in life. We receive, we receive. Somebody shout, I receive. From the finished work of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Say with me, very loud, I am what the word says I am. So we are receivers. We are receivers. We are receivers. We receive from what Jesus has made available to us. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Jesus said, when he's raised from the dead, we shall receive. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive, receive, receive. And that's why John used the word believe, believe, believe. Because at the point of believing, you receive. At the point of believing, you receive. The moment you believe, you receive. If you observe the sermons of Brother Peter... In the Gospels or in the early church, you will see that Brother Peter used the word repent, repent, repent. All right? When he used the word repent, please pay attention because that's another area where in the body of Christ certain words are used to confuse believers of the redemption they have in Christ. The word repent is used in Peter's sermons. So let's highlight four of Peter's sermons. Four of them. Number one, Acts 2.37. Now when they heard these, they were pricked in their heart. Peter has finished preaching. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men, brethren, what shall we do? Look at Peter's answer. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Pay attention. He didn't say repent from your sins. And in the church world, every time they talk about repent, they will say from your sins. But if you observe carefully, nobody made mention of sins. Put it back for me. Now when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men, brethren, what shall we do? Look at Peter's answer. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
the question was what shall we do and he said to them repent Acts 16 31 and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house somebody asked jesus what shall i do to be saved the rich young ruler jesus said unto that man sell all that you have give to the poor take your cross come let's go what must i do to inherit eternal life sell all you have give to the poor come let's go somebody asked peter peter said repent repent acts 2 38 to 39 then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this outward generation paul said you shall be saved believe you shall be saved Peter's second sermon, Acts 3.19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. If repentance is equivalent to the forgiveness of sin, he wouldn't say repent therefore and be converted before saying that your sins will be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So the repentance is not for the forgiveness of sins. The purpose of the repentance is not for the forgiveness of sins. I'm going to show you, just pay attention. So repentance, therefore, means change your mindset. He said repent, then he said receive. Repent, receive. He didn't say repent from your sins, he just said repent. Because if I repent from my sin, there will be no need to blot out my sins anymore. Okay, so the repenting is the changing of your mind, which is not connected to sin. It is not because you repent that your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus died and you believe. Your sins are forgiven irrespective of your repentance. It is because you have understood that your sins are forgiven that you have repented in changing your mind to receive what has been given to you. So it is not because you have repented that your sins are forgiven. Okay? Your sins are forgiven before you repented. God commended his love to us, us in that while we were yet sinners, what happened? Christ died. So my sins were forgiven before I repented. The repentance there is me changing my mind to appreciate what Christ has done in forgiving my sins so I can receive from what he has done. So it is not a repentance that brings the forgiveness of sins. Uh -uh. Repentance is the changing of your mind. For example, somebody has told you that God is a killer. God is a destroyer. God will punish you. And you're so scared of God and afraid of God. In that mindset, you cannot receive God's best. Because every time you think of God, you think of a terrorist who is looking for how to punish you. Then somebody came with the good news and preached the good news of what Christ has done for you. And preached the good news of the love of God. And preached the good news of the mercy of God. And then in the course of his preaching, you saw God in a better light. So what happened to your mind? You repented. And when your mind changed, what happened? You are now in a better state to receive from what has been provided. So it's not the repentance that brings the forgiveness of sins. So that's why he said to them, repent and be converted. You see that? Acts 5, 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God had given to them that obey. The word obey there is the word believe. Repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Two different things. Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted. Two things. Repent and be converted. So repentance is not forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin is not repentance. They are two different things. And uh, you will understand why I'm doing this eventually when I begin to round up what I'm teaching you tonight. Praise God. Now whenever the word repentance was used, Peter directed it to the Jews. The Jews to change their mind. Question, why will Peter say to the Jews to change their minds? 
Why will Peter ask the Jews to change their minds about Jesus? Because number one, they saw when he was born. Number two, they know his mother. Number three, they know his brothers and sisters. Number four, they saw him in the carpentry workshop. So how can they receive from that little boy in their minds whom they saw born the other day? So Peter kept telling them, change your mind. This Jesus is bigger than what you're thinking. He is God who became a man. So that's why the message of repentance was preached to the Jews so they can change their mind about Jesus in order for them to receive what he has offered to them. That's why you find out most of the repent, repent, repent was the message Peter preached to the Jews. That's why we're looking at it in Peter's sermons. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at Philip's preaching here. Philip's preaching, Acts 8, 12 to 13. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. He believed. This guy believed. All right? Now look at verse 18. And when Simon saw... That through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. So repentance has to do with the changing of your mindset, your thinking pattern. Change your mind about God. Somebody say, you know, God is always looking forward to punish. Well, the other day I checked, God's anger was exalted on Jesus and God's disposition towards you is that he loves you, he wants you saved by all means. Repentance doesn't deal with your nature. It changes your thinking. It does not deal with your behavior. It changes your thinking. Please, that's important. Your nature comes by believing. Repentance is a change of mindset. Acts chapter 10 verse 41. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive what? Remission of sins. You believe your sins are forgiven. No repentance. Now, the audience differs. Where we just read in Acts chapter 10 was in the house of Cornelius. There were no Jewish people here. There were only Gentiles. And Gentiles were not asked to repent. The previous chapters we read, and we read the sermons of Peter, it was all to Jewish people. And he told them to repent. But to Gentiles, he told them to believe and their sins are forgiven. Why? Gentiles don't have to change their mind about Jesus. The only Jesus they know is the one that has been preaching them who rose from the dead. The Jews need to because they saw him in a manger. So Jewish people need to change their mind. Up till today in Israel, they are waiting for Jesus to come. I hope you know that. They need to change their mind. They need to repent. And they will only repent when they hear the right word. As long as you keep celebrating their Judaism with them, they have no reason to repent. As long as you keep going to Jerusalem for pilgrimage, importing holy oil, holy water, prayer shawl and everything, you are making them feel superior to you. They cannot believe in your Jesus. You must make them know that they are nothing. The only thing that will make them important is believing the gospel. Any believer in this church? So the Gentiles are not asked to repent. Who is asked to repent? The Jew, why do they have to repent? Because their minds are messed up. They've got to change their minds. Our minds are not messed up. Well, religion has eventually messed our minds up too. Is it not true? 
eventually religion has messed up the minds of of people that are not jews so even some of the people that are not jews need to repent they need to change their minds when you have the impression that god kills people so you pray father kill him kill him kill him you need to repent you need to change your mind because god is not a killer no he's not a killer he's a life giver sweet and bitter water does not come out of the same fountain god cannot be a killer and a life giver he's either a life giver or a killer which one is he a life giver i am come that you may have and have it says a life giver he doesn't kill all right so they need to change their minds look at that Acts chapter 10 verse 43 44 45 to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins while peter yet spake these words the holy ghost fell on all them which heard the word those that heard what so it is critical to hear what happens to you in a service will be dependent on what you hear you need to hear you need to pay attention to the things that are being spoken don't be distracted don't let anything get you off because when you are distracted you are denied something that will have added to you in that service you've got to hear while peter yet spake as he was talking those that were hearing the holy ghost didn't fall on everybody it fell on those who heard you see the choice of words it is a while peter yet spake the holy ghost fell on everybody and he took time to distinguish he said the holy ghost fell on those who heard same thing in the service today as i'm teaching now you're hearing the holy ghost is working with what i'm teaching to confirm it in your life but you will only confirm based on your hearing and sometimes somebody satan will just organize for you and somebody to sit in the service who likes to talk while two of you are talking i have gone by the time he comes he has missed now he didn't understand what i said so the holy ghost couldn't move like you should have moved on him because he didn't hear what i said and the holy ghost only fell on those who heard take heed what you hear the holy ghost fell on those who heard healing takes place while i'm teaching how many of you know while i'm teaching healing takes place how many of you know that because the power of god is present present to heal while jesus taught in luke chapter 5 verse 17 and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of galilee and judea and jerusalem and what the power the power of the lord was what present to do what why was the power present because the word was being taught you don't have to feel eh, eh, quiet it is called silent action as i'm teaching and you're listening and you're paying attention and you are hearing the holy ghost through the instrumentality and the vehicle of those words is at work on your inside whenever the word is taught the power is present to heal no drama no razzmatazz quietly the power was present but you know what nobody was healed in that service in that congregation nobody was healed why are they not healed they were pharisees and doctors of the law they were reasoning in their heart and they were asking questions that challenged what jesus was teaching they were critical so the power was present but couldn't get on their cases so some people who had a friend who was crippled took their crippled friend, put him on a stretcher, brought him to the building, opened the roof, and dropped the man from the roof right before Jesus in that same service. And Jesus looked at the man and said, Man, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees and the doctors of the law, Jesus has said something that will expose their heart. And they began, they were like bees making noise. And Jesus said to them, hey guys, which one is easier? To tell this man your sins are forgiven or to tell him be healed? But that you may know that the spirit has power, but to forgive and to heal. I not only forgive this man, you stand up man, take your mat and get out of here. The man stood up, took his mat and got up because the power was present and the man heard what Jesus was saying. You just take the word. Somebody say the word of God, word of God. is self-contained. It has everything I need. If I can let it come in, it will come in with everything I need. Now look at verse 44. 
While Peter here spake those words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which are the word, and they of the circumcision, which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the Holy Ghost. They discovered that Peter didn't tell the Gentiles to repent. He didn't tell, he just preached. And while he was preaching, the people were wrapped in their listening. And the people were receiving what Peter was teaching. And light was breaking forth in their heart. And in the midst of that, the Holy Ghost bam all over the place. And while Peter is speaking, people started nobody laid hands on another. And the Jews said, whoa! Whoa! Look at them Gentiles. These uncircumcised people are speaking in tongues. Maybe they are copying us. But this can't be copied because it's as real as what happened on Pentecost. The Holy Ghost bypassed protocol. When you pay attention to God's word, God's word goes to work by the spirit of God in your life, causing that word to produce the desired effect. That's why you've got to listen. You've got to pay attention to the word. The totality of God's revelation is communicated via words. That's why I'm taking time to explain words like disciple, words like repent. Because these are words, these are concepts that can cloud your salvation if they are not clearly explained. So, we are not learners. Somebody say, we are not learners. We are believers. Say, we are those who receive. Yeah, we receive. Say, I receive understanding. Say, I receive revelation. Say it again, I receive. Revelation. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I receive revelation. I receive understanding. I receive light. I receive. I receive. I receive. Amen. We are not learners. We are believers. Who is a believer? Say I am a believer. Therefore I receive. I didn't hear your amen. The word says you are a son of God. So what are you? Son of God. The word being taught is used in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ. Learned Christ. Is that word learned a past word or a present word or a future word? Put it up again. You have not so. Is that past? If so be that you have heard and have been taught. Been taught. Is it past or present? By him. As the truth is where? in jesus the truth is where in jesus next verse that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws and the truth of the matter is that the moment you got born again you put off the old man you couldn't have been born again if the old man was still on you you put off the old man and you have put on the new man if any man beware he is what you have put on the new man already Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship created where? In Christ Jesus. Where are you created? In Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Which God had before ordained that we should walk. Yeah, you've been created in Christ. That's why you have put off. You have put on. You don't create yourself. You have been recreated by God. Verse 8 and 9 makes you see that it is not your work. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. It's not me doing it. It is what God has done in me. Hallelujah. It's not me trying to be a good guy. No, it is in my DNA to be a good person. So I don't have to try. I just have to acknowledge what is in me. And by acknowledging, it begins to manifest. Glory to God. So instead of teaching me what to do, show me who I am. You didn't hear what I said. Instead of teaching me what to do, instead of telling me what to do, you can't be a better teacher than the Holy Ghost. So instead of teaching and troubling me, just show me who I am. And when I come to terms with who I am, who I am will manifest. When you come to church, what am I doing here? I'm showing you who you are. I have never come to service to teach you what to do. Our job in Power City is not to teach you what to do. It's to show you who you are. When you see who you are, in who you are, you will see what you have. In what you have, you will see what you can do. You walk out to the service saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Glory to God. We show you who you are. 
Religion teaches you what to do. Religion tells you 10 steps, 5 steps, 4 steps. Revelation knowledge tells you this is who you are. Complete in him. Who is complete? Are you complete? So you don't teach a man that is complete what to do. Inherent in him is what to do. Show him who he is. And what to do in him will come alive. That's why salvation is not the things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, is a lie. You still go. That song is, has lies inside. How can you say the places you used to go, you don't go anymore? Before you got born again, didn't you used to go to work? Don't you still go to work? So why will you say you don't go anymore? You're not hearing what I'm saying. The things I used to do. Are you sure? Didn't you used to eat? Don't you eat now? Is it not something you used to do? Something is wrong with that song. You still sleep. Were you not sleeping before? You're sleeping now. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. The things I used to say, See your face. <laughs> That's not salvation. Salvation is I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. Show me who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. It's not the things I used to do. I do them no more. Even what you're doing now is the things you used to do before. So I'm saying, hey, no, that's not what we mean. What we mean is that the bad, bad things I used to do before, I don't do them again. Are you sure? There are still bad, bad things that you're doing till now. So salvation is not things and doing and not doing. Repentance is a brand new man created in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout, I am the handwork of God created in Christ Jesus in righteousness and true holiness say with me the raw material used in creating me is righteousness and true holiness I am righteous I don't have righteousness I am I am I am the righteousness of God in Christ who is the righteousness of God in Christ here somebody shout I am his holiness Tell your neighbor, always greet me his holiness. Your holiness. Whose holiness? His holiness. Who is his holiness? You. Who is his righteousness? You. Who is his sanctification? You. Amen. I said amen. So salvation is not doing something. Salvation is a brand new man that has come into the space. And just show that man who he is. His potentials will come into play. Glory to God. Don't tell me what to do and what not to do. Tell me who I am. Stop telling me. Hey, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, if you keep telling me what to do and what not to do, you end up controlling me into a zone I was not designed to function in. And therefore, I keep failing and failing because you're giving me what lacks the ability to make me do what you're asking me to do. But inherent in me is Sagayadaga. All that I need to be what I am is already on my inside. Somebody shout, I am self-contained. I, self I have eternal life. The fruit of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit. All of it is inside me. I thought somebody would shout a good amen. amen. Titus 2 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to how many people? Amen. Then look at the next verse. Teaching us that deny ungodliness and what he lost, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. Grace is not teaching us. If grace is teaching us, it means we are still undergoing do's and don'ts. It means the work was not complete. So that means that verse needs interpretation. In order for us to interpret that verse contextually, we have to look at the explanation. Okay? What is the explanation? Chapter 3, verse 4. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration 
a renewing of the Holy Ghost. This is the explanation to teaching us. Teaching us means that we have already been taught on our inside. Inherent in us is the knowledge of what we can do and all of our abilities. Not by works of righteousness. It's not about what we do. It's about what he has done in us. Somebody say he has done it. In me. Already. Say he's not going to do it. He has done it. Yes. And because he has done it, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to acknowledge acknowledge so it's not like god is going to start teaching us now uh -uh. Uh -uh. it's part of our composition it's inherent in our dna the complete work of grace the total work of grace praise the lord so the work of verse 12 titus 2 11 the work of verse 12 is the work of the holy ghost washing of regeneration that's the way titus chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 puts it the washing of regeneration it's not a process it's an instant thing that happened when you got born again instant how many of you are born over a process of time nobody all of us were born at once how many of you know that the little baby that is born today and the adult that is standing there, all of them are the same. The difference is just in development. There's nothing an adult has that a little child doesn't have. In fact, that baby at infancy has everything you have. Two eyes, two everything, even the organs, even the entire composition of the system is the same. There's nothing you have that a baby doesn't have. The difference is development. Nobody was born partially partially human then as he began to eat he became human is there any of you like that the day your mother brought you out you came out like a monkey they say, give him lactogen give him sma then he starts eating then the monkey starts going then human body starts appearing they say, hey, to finalize it let him swallow some eba for international orders eba is something you swallow in nigeria so let him swallow eba then they gave him eba they push another one then the face did, then the hand now became human hand. How many of you were born like that? Nobody. So just like you were not born like that, the day you got born again, you were born a child of God. You were born a son of God. Complete everything. You're complete in him. It's not after foundation class that you become a complete Christian. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Foundation class is supposed to actually not exist in the church. Why? Everything I'm teaching is foundation class. They call it uh, new creation realities. The entire New Testament is new creation realities. So instead of foundation class, we have membership class. What is the membership class for? To show you our vision, our mission, why we do the things we do in our church so that you can integrate well. That's all. But everything we teach here is foundation class. Everything we teach here is new creation reality. Everything we teach here is redemption reality. Everything we teach here is resurrection reality. Everything we teach here it's realities of the new man. Glory to God. Shout yes. Why? Because you came out complete and our job is to show you what has already happened inside you. There's nothing more that God will add to you. Everything you needed to be a child of God came out with you the day you got born again. It was a resurrection. Except a man be born. Except what? You don't become a Christian in steps. We cannot train you to be a Christian. Can you train a monkey to be a human being? Somebody say, I'm born of God. Shout it very loud. Shout it louder. So we don't teach people to be Christians. You're either a Christian or you are not. And how did you become a Christian? By believing the gospel. Amen. And when you believe the gospel, what happened? You receive the life of God. Oh, hallelujah. Who has the life of God in this place? If you have the life of God, shout, I have the life of God. In me. Right now. The life of God is on my inside. Shout hallelujah. John 3, 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water, which is of the spirit, he cannot enter. So how do you become a believer? By being born. You are a believer by being born. There's no other way to be a believer. The only way is to be born. Is the word procreate. To give birth to. Or to be born anew. Or a peculiar birth. A birth that comes from above. 
So being a believer is not a process. It's an instant work of the Holy Ghost. So we are not called disciples to be sons of God. We are sons of God, born of God. And Jesus is the first to be called the son of God. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Matthew 16, 16 to 18. Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. John 1, 14, the word became flesh. John 1, 18, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son of God, which is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 1 John 4, 9, the only begotten son, the incarnation. But in the book of Acts, he is called the first begotten. First begotten. So we have the incarnate Christ and we have the first begotten from the dead. The prototokos, the prototype. The word prototokos means a prototype. He is the set in an order for all others. Firstborn. Firstborn means he's not the only one. Firstborn means he is the model or the mold through which others will be produced. The prototype. Glory to God. The prototype. How do you get born again? Faith in the gospel. When you believe the gospel, you're born again. You're born again when you believe the gospel. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 8, If anyone be in Christ, is a new creature. In Christ. In Christ. Why is the word in Christ there? He is the model son. It means all of us are like him. All of us are like him. Somebody shout, I'm just like Jesus. Say it, let the devil get angry. Shout it, let religion be mad. Shout it louder, let legalism collapse. No more, no less. Say it very loud, no more, no less. I'm exactly like Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. Yeah. Uh, he's the firstborn. Among how many brethren? Many. First Peter 123. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. James 1:18. Of his own will begat he us by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creation. Jesus is the sample son. And Jesus is a sample son, not by incarnation, but by resurrection. He is the model by resurrection, not by incarnation. He's not your model in incarnation because you're not an incarnate. He's only your model in resurrection because he died your death because you were dead. He identified by that identification. He rose and gave you life. Glory to God. Somebody shout, Jesus is my brother. Jesus. Say, when he rose, I rose. When he rose, I rose. Say, when he died, I died. When he died I and say, where he is, I am. Is, I am. Shout it very loud, where he is, I am. Is, I am. What is not in him, is not in me. Where he is, I am. Is, I am. What he has, I have. Is, I thought you would shout a powerful amen to that. Yeah. Jump on your feet, let me close this service. Because if you stay with me, I can just keep going, going, going. So much to say. But are you blessed tonight? Yes. Say with me, I am born, I am born in, righteousness in righteousness and true holiness. And true holiness. Tell your neighbor, there is true holiness. There is true holiness. Meaning there is, false holiness. there is false holiness. Why did the Bible qualify it? You only qualify if there is another one. Abby? If I say, two of you come, two of you, just because you're sitting together. If I say, <laughs> these are two humans, but one is a woman. These are two humans, but what am I saying? That the two of them are not the same. I just distinguish it, even though they are humans, but there's a distinction. Male and female. Is that true? Okay, so I'm going to use two of you for something now. 
this way, you stand here. True holiness, false holiness. Not you. Illustration. True holiness, false holiness. But two of them are two of them are holiness. Is it not true? Yes. Two of them are holiness. But true holiness, false holiness. Meaning they are not the same. Meaning there are things holiness true will do that holiness false will not do. And there are things holiness false will do and holiness true will not do. For example, holiness true is nature. Holiness false is acting. So when you see people with false holiness, bless you. Yeah, Mutala, he cares. Acting. Drama. True holiness, no acting. Just be yourself. Accepted in the beloved. Glory to God. Shout yes. True holiness, be yourself. Dress modest. False holiness, tie scarf, cover your neck, cover your body to your leg. Even to your hand. In fact, wear gloves. So that you don't shake sinners. False holiness. True holiness, dress the way you want. Just make sure all nakedness is covered, which is called modesty. And just be nice. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Amen. Somebody shout, I am created in righteousness and true holiness. I'm not pretending. This is who I am. I am what the word says I am I have what the word says I have I can do what the word says I can do I thought somebody will shout amen like thunder I thought somebody will shout amen like thunder say with me I have all the resources in Christ in me I have the ability of God at work on my inside all of god's ability has been exhausted on my inside the fullness of god is at work on my inside i am complete in christ every good thing that is in god is in me right now right now i'm not trying to be good i am good already on my inside the more i see myself the more i manifest my true identity in Christ Jesus. Shout amen to that somebody. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. As the word continues to grow on your inside. As revelation knowledge grows on your inside. I declare that you manifest your full potentials. Your full abilities. Your full resources. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is not of God around you, I command it to expire. Expire. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed beyond the cause. You are kept by the power of God. You are preserved by the Holy Ghost. You are sustained by the life of God. In the name of Jesus, you live above death. You live above every spell of the enemy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue of the devil against you is condemned. You are blessed to be a blessing. In the name of Jesus, this week the works of your hands are blessed. In the name of Jesus, I decree you exercise your authority function within the power of God in the name of Jesus whatever is not of God making noise around you I command it to be flushed out flush out flush out flush out in the name of Jesus